catalysis is the chemical phenomenon by which reactions are sped up. Many reactions are favorable, that is, they have negative or near zero delta G, but have such high activation energy barriers that they don't happen under normal circumstances. For instance, ester hydrolysis is extremely slow under neutral conditions. You can do liquid-liquid extractions with ethyl acetate and water, after all. Catalysts speed up reactions by somehow changing the reaction mechanism slightly, either by making the starting materials somehow more reactive, or by allowing the reaction to proceed through different intermediates, or both. Either way, the reaction coordinate for a catalyzed reaction looks substantially different than an uncatalyzed reaction. It's important to note, though, that catalysts don't change the overall favorability of a reaction. They don't, it, that is, they don't affect delta G or KEQ. They just speed the reaction up. However, they often enable reactions that otherwise wouldn't occur at all because they're so slow. One of the critical defining characteristics of catalysts is that they are regenerated over the course of a reaction. They do their job of speeding the reaction up, but once they finish that job, they are released back just as they started. There are many types of catalysts. The types that are most commonly used in chemistry laboratories are homogeneous catalysts. These sorts of catalysts dissolve in the reaction solvent and interact with the reaction's reactants in defined, straightforward ways. These are the types of catalysts that we'll focus on. There's another type of catalyst called a heterogeneous catalyst that is very common in manufacturing and industrial settings. These catalysts are usually solids that are insoluble in common solvents. The mechanisms by which they function are quite complicated, and we won't be exploring them. Within homogeneous catalysts, there are several varieties. We've seen many examples of Bronsted acid and base catalysts. Acid catalysts work by protonating something, typically the electrophile, thereby making it more reactive. Base catalysts work by deprotonating something, usually the nucleophile, again, making it more reactive. Lewis acids and bases can work similarly, and if you've read the textbook in detail, you've probably seen several examples of Lewis acids catalyzing reactions. Though they're in the textbook, we won't be focusing on them. Enzymes are another class of homogeneous catalysts. These are critically important in biological chemistry, where they facilitate all sorts of complex reactions necessary for metabolism, the biosynthesis of all sorts of important molecules, and cellular functioning. One of the most important classes of homogeneous catalysts are transition metal complexes. These compounds have transition metal ions from the D block of the periodic table, bonded to a number of ligands. We'll be exploring the structures, properties, and reactivity of these types of complexes over the next several videos.